This is a response to Venom Fang X's video, Thunderfoot Serves Death. In your video, you claim to be responding to Thunderfoot's challenge to provide even a single instance of divinely inspired scientific knowledge from your Bible, rather than the shamefully lame post hoc rationalization of the ignorant burblings of primitive barbarians that you previously claimed described an expanding universe. It seemed that you felt yourself up to the challenge and in fact came up with what you apparently think are two fine examples of biblical revelation of scientific knowledge. And while Thunderfoot's already pointed out why they're nothing of the sort but just lame exercises and sloppy reasoning or wishful thinking, I have to say that he seemed to be exceedingly too polite while doing so. As a result, I felt it wouldn't be entirely a waste of my time to go over a few points that he missed and also give your ideas a little taste of the rough stuff. 3,000 years ago, the Bible described the paths of the seas in Psalm chapter 8. In the 19th century, the father of oceanography, named Matthew Murray, after reading Psalm 8, researched and discovered ocean currents that follow specific paths through the seas. Before I begin, I'd like to note that it's telling that your book talks of paths to the sea where rivers would certainly have been more appropriate. It really is such a shame that your omnipotent God couldn't be just a little better at grammar because it leaves his burblings open to interpretation by any passing fucktard with an agenda. Science Sean uses very precise language in order to avoid such confusion, something which your best friend apparently thought unnecessary when passing on his pearls of wisdom. Now you did acknowledge earlier in your video, Sean, that you realized that you might be criticized for adopting Wikipedia as your source, but justified your resorting to it by citing Thunderfoot's own previous use of this resource. I have no issues with Wikipedia per se, and it is in fact a useful and convenient starting point for researching many topics. But if you're going to rely on it as your only source, then you're potentially asking for trouble. And as it says in your little book of stories, Sean, ask and you shall receive. The first thing I did was to turn to the wiki oracle myself, looked up the page that you showed us, and discovered something unusual. Here's the line you showed us in your video regarding Psalm 8, and here is the very same line I looked up a few days later. Do you notice a difference? Now I'm not going to speculate on why your screenshot's missing the fact that the author of the wiki felt it necessary to mention that he'd been unable to find a credible reference to this claim. It may be that this extra tidbit appeared in the article in the intervening few days since you made your video and that Adobe Systems Incorporated had nothing to do with its absence in your clip. But even so, that's beside the point. What is on point is that this means that you provided no solid evidence whatsoever to support your claim that Matthew Morey discovered ocean currents directly because of biblical revelation. So I decided to do what you should have fucking done had you been either willing or asked in the first place and that's some further research. For some reason, I was unsurprised to find that the only places I could find the claim that there was a direct cause and effect relationship between the text of Psalm 8 and Maury's discovery of ocean currents was on religious websites. Now why do you suppose that would be? The closest I could come to a primary source was a pamphlet written by Maury's son in 1915, 43 years after his death, containing a hearsay account from his sister of an alleged event that occurred at least six decades earlier. That may be sufficient for someone who's willing to believe the things that you do, Sean, but for those of us who live in reality and prefer to use our brains for more than just keeping our eyeballs from falling into our skulls, it's just not good enough. If you want to be taken more seriously than a village idiot applying for a faculty position at Harvard, then kindly supply documented and verifiable evidence of Maury himself claiming the existence of these currents positively dated to a time before he began his work. It could be from a journal of his, or perhaps a letter to a friend. Even better, a published piece in a newspaper, or better still, a technical periodical. Anything from Maury himself after his work on currents is also unacceptable, as memories are easily colored by the passage of time, personal bias, and wishful thinking. Now, I realize you may call foul here, Sean. I'm asking too much, you may claim. I'm being too picky, maybe too demanding. Well, unfortunately, this is the kind of rigor demanded by the discipline of science, so if you want to play this game, you need to play by the rules and not the make-it-up-as-you-go bullshit of religion. If you want to convince anyone other than those who are already in the habit of believing without question anything that supports their pre-existing superstitious beliefs, then I suggest you do a better job than this and go hit the books. And if you can't be bothered, then perhaps your new <clears throat> friend, Kyle, could stop trying his best to look hard instead of mentally challenged and do it for you. But before either of you try, I should point out that you'll still be wasting your time because I also dug up a few gems that you were strangely ignorant of or neglected to mention. 
Are you aware that one of your paths, the Gulf Stream, was described by Ponce de Leon as early as 1513? And if that's not enough, are you aware that none other than Benjamin Franklin produced a detailed map of the Gulf Stream in 1769, 37 years before Maury's birth? So while I've got no contention that Maury was the first to discover and map many ocean currents, it's clear that their existence was known of well before his time and it's highly likely that Maury would have been aware of it. Thus Maury, knowing of the Gulf Stream, could well have mentally connected it with the paths mentioned in Psalms and been inspired to look for more of them. But that's hardly the same as discovering a new physical phenomenon based on scripture now, is it? In fact, from where I'm standing, it looks exactly like just another limp post hoc rationalization. How surprising. Encyclopedia Britannica documents that in 1845, a young doctor in Vienna named Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis was horrified at the terrible death rate of women who gave birth in hospitals. Semmelweis insisted that doctors wash their hands before examinations, and the death rate immediately dropped to 2%. Look at the specific instructions that God gave his people for when they should encounter disease. Quote, and when he that has an issue is cleansed of that issue, he shall number of himself even days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, and shall be clean. I'm going to ignore in the way you yourself ignored the remainder of the demented ramblings that involve cures affected by ritual animal sacrifice that are in the very same chapter of your quite remarkable yet somewhat unorthodox medical school textbook. It would, however, be more than a little amusing to see what kind of convoluted logic your mind would puke up to explain them. Even you admit that Semmelweis was not inspired by scripture, Sean, so you're completely relying on this knowledge of basic hygiene being unobtainable by the primitive Bronze Age savages who were nevertheless good enough to be the personal playthings of your schizophrenic sky pixie. As such, this knowledge you contend could only have been provided by the emotionally insecure bearded one himself, perhaps in exchange for a plate of overcooked lamb fat and a bucket of blood. Unfortunately, Sean, you neglect to consider that technologies can and were developed before the advent of the scientific method. These were discovered usually by either serendipity or by observing the natural world and making simple correlations and then developed over millennia essentially by trial and error with the occasional sprinkling of additional luck. These ancient technologies also had one thing in common and that's that no one knew why they worked. Brewing's been around for 8,000 years and yet it's only in the last 100 that we've come to understand that it works because microscopic fungi use the high energy electrons liberated from the conversion of glucose to pyruvate during the process of glycolysis as an energy source and then ferment the pyruvate to form alcohol. Cheese making is perhaps even older and was developed despite anyone knowing that it works by an analogous bacterial fermentation process that results in the conversion of pyruvate to lactic acid rather than ethanol. And the smelting of metal ores dating well into prehistory was conducted for millennia before we finally discovered that roasting converts sulfide and carbonate ores to oxides that are reduced by carbon monoxide at high temperature to produce free metals. Now let's take a look at your example, Sean. Notice anything it might have in common with mine? Isn't it strange how your precious psalm makes no mention of bacteria or viruses? No mention of the pathological mechanism of either? Not even a hint of why washing might be a wise course of action. Your example, Sean, is no more remarkable than any of mine and no less likely or explainable as being the work of men, contains no insights that could not have been obtained in the absence of the scientific method and certainly gives no underlying reasons for why hand washing might be a good idea. In any case, it was astounding to watch how you arrogantly proclaimed victory over Thunderfoot in your video when you didn't even respond to his challenge. Either your god has gifted you with an impressive set of balls or a pitifully short attention span. To remind you, this whole exchange began when you made the somewhat ambitious claim that your bible described the Big Bang millennia before it was discovered by mankind, and the challenge was for you to use your book to predict a phenomenon currently unknown to science. Did you miss that part, Sean? or did it prove a little too difficult for you? Also, I was under the impression that you believed that your world was created in seven days, so I was surprised to see you taking credit for your book predicting an event that happened almost 14 billion years ago. I was unaware that you'd retracted your previous Young Earth stance, and if you haven't, then how do you explain this? You're not lying your fucking face off just to feebly try and win a point rather than conducting an honest debate, are you, Sean? Because that wouldn't be very Christian now would it? Anyway, I digress. So what do you come up with in response, Sean? 
too mundane pedestrian observations of phenomena that have been known of for centuries and absolutely no corroborating evidence. If that's the best you've got, I suggest you go back to making shit up. At least it'll save you the effort of pretending to read anything other than your fantasy fiction. It's also fascinating that I issued essentially the same challenge to an Islamic equivalent of yourself in the very first video of this series and all that he could come back with was yet more post hoc rationalization of his desert myths. You people can't find insights into the inner workings of the universe in your book Sean because they don't contain them and are just full of the meandering prose and poetry of primitive and ignorant men from a barbaric time. So if you want to take another crack at the real challenge Sean feel free. I for one would be more than interested to hear what you come up with, but a little less than eager to find out what it smells like.